when you're insulin resistant, that is you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this video, we feature ferritin. Now, ferritin is up. Its levels are typically higher than normal in someone who is insulin resistant, and it often goes hand in hand with inflammation. So, what exactly is ferritin? Well, it's not a hormone. It's a housekeeping protein produced by cells. Its job is to keep iron molecules in their place. You see, cells need iron. It's used to make some pretty important proteins work. The problem with iron is it's dangerous. If just left hanging around, it reacts. This is a side effect of its ability to move electrons around. When the electrons fly away in an uncontrolled manner, it can result in a free radical. This reactivity is actually what makes iron so valuable. Electrons make things happen, but their reactivity needs to be channeled. The proteins that have iron atoms buried deep inside of them are designed to use this reactivity to do some pretty cool chemistry. But if it just zoots around inside the cell, it can do quite a bit of damage. The ferritin makes sure this doesn't happen. So maybe you're thinking, more ferritin inside the cell must be a good thing. The problem is the ferritin is not inside the cells. When the ferritin is inside the cells, this is good. But when ferritin levels are being measured, you're looking at how much ferritin is in the blood. That is, it's not inside cells. Which brings us to the issue. The ferritin is not doing a great job holding on to the iron, and this is because the cell is not doing a great job holding on to the ferritin. Basically, the ferritin in the blood is a sign of a problem. Now, one of the problems is believed to be cell damage. Now, we can debate why so many cells have been damaged. It's likely that the immune system has a hand in the destruction. Since ferritin levels typically rise in situations where there is a lot of inflammation. In fact, ferritin status is a good proxy for inflammation and iron status, provided there is no inflammation. Because under these circumstances, how much ferritin is in the circulation hints at how much iron is in the body. The reason the more iron stores you have, the more ferritin will be in the blood. Now, the problem in metabolic syndrome is the ferritin is not inside, it's outside, and a lot of the iron molecules so carefully stacked inside the ferritin are not alone for the ride. They've fallen off and they're circulating, creating reactions everywhere they go. Reactions mean damage. So, what gets damaged? Well, pretty much everything that an unaccompanied iron molecule bumps into. In addition to oxidizing things left, right, and center, those floating iron atoms wake up the dead. So, you don't want high ferritin levels if you can help it. Now, stopping inflammation is a worthy goal. But the practicalities are not so simple. So, if you can't directly stop the ferritin from being released, you can do something about stopping its cargo from floating around unaccompanied. First things first, get enough iron. Not too little, not too much. Remember, the more iron stores you have, the more iron will spill out when cells get damaged. Only supplement when you are really iron deficient. 
and if you are a little top heavy, one way to decrease your iron stores is to regularly donate blood. It's a win-win story. You'll save someone else's life and improve your body chemistry. Finally, mop up the excess. Remember, the problem is free iron. When the iron is attached to something, it's not that big of a deal. Chemicals that mop up iron are called iron chelators. There are quite a few options. Since I like natural solutions, I would encourage you to include fruits and vegetables in your diet. They contain polyphenols, which are iron chelators. But there are also pharmacological options you might consider if the situation warrants them. Here are a few of the journal articles I've used to tell the ferritin story. Ferritin is just one of hundreds of chemicals in the body that are amiss when you're suffering from metabolic syndrome. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about some of the other players in our Ups and Downs Insulin Resistance series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.